Oh man, the Palu comes out. What? Women's finals. Anzo with the counting pick thinking, hey, I really don't want to play these matchups that, you know, that may or may not go even with Lucas. Today, I want to play the, the, the funny Palutena. And by the way, she does exceptionally well um, against uh, against both the, you know, the psychokinetic fellas. So it's tough, you know? Something interesting that I noticed that Aria did earlier, he, he actually air dodged up out of neutral air from like, he was like an 8%. And I'm curious if that's like actually a thing. Oh wow. Yeah, getting back onto stage is so difficult, but down through a back air, gonna connect. I don't know if that was suspect PI on the down throw, or, or at, maybe at that window that was actually a thing. But either way, he's gonna be losing his stock pretty early um, against you know, Paul Tanner. She, she, I, I'd argue, like, compared to, like, a fairly majority of the top twos, she does kind of struggle to take out stock sometimes. Um, especially ever since, you know, they did move through down through quite a, quite a while ago. And that being said, not gonna be able to fully connect with his down downer loops, only just connecting a couple of hits of it. Yeah, I mean, to me, it looks like Enzo is just maneuvering all the way around Aria. He is just struggling to connect a single hit on him. And every time he does, it seems like it's only like a one-off hit. Right? But while Palutena gets a hit, she gets multiple, multiple hits. Right? She gets back in to dash attack. She gets nail loops, something going on. Um, but Aria is just struggling so much to get anything started. That's a really, really good release of the magnet there. It's able to two frame Palutena. Excellent edge guard. Coming from Aria, trying to uh, even things up ever so slightly. That was a really, really good fade around the auto radical. That was a very nice recovery. He definitely made the most out of his own character's drift. The eyeing in on the down throw. Um, I kind of get it. He didn't want to be like close enough to the edge to the point where um, you know, if back was gonna connect either way, right, it's it's better if you were at least closer to center stage than that. Um, ooh, nicely timed magnet, just barely missing Lucas's head. Wow. Is he gonna be able to connect the two? No, he's not. I don't know what option Enzo threw out. Might have been a neutral air dodge. But either way, he was still able to get around it. Palutena's multi-jab does indeed kill at around 130, 140 plus. You have to be mindful of it. It's a really, really quick button. It's always so scary when a character has a multi-jab that kills. I really like the opt for the um, neutral air facing the other direction. He went through the reverse aerial rush neutral air. Just kind of threw Aria off of his DI a little bit and sort of kept him in center stage and increasing the time that he would be comboed. That DI on back here was definitely something else, you know? Yeah, something about that interaction makes me a little bit uncomfortable, but it's okay. It happens sometimes. Happens to the best of us. Yeah, so I've noticed he has a bit of a habit of like trying to either always go through like the double jump cancel magnet on, uh, excuse me, double jump cancel Zell on shield, or he goes for an immediate neutral getup. Uh, and as a result, he kind of makes his out of ledge options a little bit too predictable. And honestly, Enzo's just kind of like, okay, I will react and cover the neutral getup whenever I react, you know? Oh, mama mia. Well, with that being said, I do hope everybody in chat is having a phenomenal evening. And even if you're not, you know, it'll get better at some point. I guess Arya is contemplating uh, a character switch or, or life or... Oh, both. Yeah, he's just it could, there. it could be both simultaneously. Yeah. He sells his he sells his soul whenever he picks Snake. Ready? 
Oh, and well, that's oh. that's what he's doing. Uh, and I oop. Yeah, facts. I haven't said and I oop in, in a good minute, right. actually. Three, two, one, go! All right. Well, game two is gonna be going to the to the funny battlefield. You know the one with uh, the Metal Gear one. That was a nice out of shield parry option. I can't help but suspect that you could have gotten something a little bit more optimal, but you know what? Damage is damage, and sometimes we take those. Um, good use of the reverse uh, grenade though, just to mix up his momentum every so slightly. And so, like, definitely, like, could not hit him. Wow, he definitely have has his out of shield, you know, parry punishes super, super, like, on point right now. He's getting them just off in every single time that Enzo tries to land on his shield. Wow, beautiful edge guard coming from Enzo though. Just catching that recovery, catching that tendency to go for the cycle over and over. He didn't want to dip low at all, um, and he got punished for it. And he right for his own. Setting up a couple of up smashes, but was still able to hit Palutena out of her reflector because I don't think she actually has a counter active as she reflects. You can hit her out of the reflector. She leaves her entire body vulnerable. Ah, oh, he tried to plant, he tried to do the funny, he tried to plant the C4, didn't get it though. Really good attempt on the rest. These wave cancels coming from Enzo are doing a really good job of mixing up Aria, but I feel like he's also like extremely unfazed by them. He's just taking the time to set up some grenades, pull some C4s, you know, drop him around, make sure he's nice and ready for whenever Enzo decides to touch the ground. Again, going through all of these high recoveries just because of how afraid he is of getting edge guarded. Um, and Enzo is always just like pixels away from being able to punish him properly. The grenade actually gonna be trading on the landing, gonna be letting him get past the up successfully. Oh, he wants it. He wants it. Mm, but this time, Palutena is actually able to use her shield and just power through with her own dash attack. Down throw into up here, catching the DI in. No, he did the thing. You know the thing that players do when they're too afraid to go off stage, so they always DI in on any moves that would normally send you out. Yeah, he, he did it, and he died for it. He probably wouldn't have died to down throw if he DI'd out. Oh, well. It happens to the best of us. Ah, he had the lead perfectly. That was that was very, very nice. He covered two out of four options. That would have been, you know, like the neutral getup or the getup attack. So, you know, he has his 50-50s on point for sure. How is he going to be able to get on from off of these platforms? And so just dominating control of the stage, and and uh, Arya just does not know how to see the light of the ground again. This time though, able to successfully recover low, to snap onto the ledge. Eudar just up just to you know have his cycle hitbox go up and above, give him a little bit of coverage. Ah, oh, that's not going to be it quite yet. Any other move though that really might have killed. That teleport, how did that not get two frame by the Nikita? That doesn't matter, he still got killed by the up tilt. But, but still, how did Enzo get past the Nikita? It was right there. It was perfectly positioned.
Yeah, Aaliyah played that really, really well, I think. Just matchup wise, it's so much better for the Snake than it would be for Lucas or any of the Psycho Kinetic fellas that he likes to play. Um, they just kind of struggle to do anything against Palutena. And when they do do something, it's a hit. Just one. They don't combo who particularly well. Um, the only thing is, like, they kind of cover who landing sometimes. Palutena definitely does shrunk, struggle to land a little bit against them. Hmm. Well, that's really cool. I didn't know that you did that. Like, create like a little window into the battle arena. I've usually only done this when uh, when there was like a DC, so that we just watched the little pogs shoot lightning at each other. But like, they're taking so long. I was just like, I was like, all right. <laughs> and we're getting the K roll. Okay. I don't have enough chocolate in me to go sit through this match because he's playing Kegel now. And you know what? It's fine. We're here to play King Kegel and Snake. Uh, hey, what can I say? King Kegel, he's, he's a big fella and he's really slow. And Snake, you know, he totals, he throws out a couple of grenades, and he makes sure King Kegel will never get back to the stage in his life. So. But I guess not. He's gonna maneuver past the Nikita with his upbeat. No matter how much limited mobility he has, yes, you can say that Enzo ended up doing it. There. This is just one barrage of projectiles after another. What was that? What was that? Did he do F tilt one into up tilt? I know for a fact that that's not a thing that people do, but still, can't, can't help but think that that was kind of cool. Oh, is he dead? No, he's not. He uses the C4 to explode himself, and thus was able to get back onto the stage. How is Kegel going to cover this landing? Uses his F tilt. This time, though, stuffing out the high recovery with his forward air. Enzo, despite, you know, being King Kegel's snake, keeping the suit rising even right now. Uh, unfortunately, not actually ending up sucking up Aria, only getting his projectile, not even getting the hit as well. Doesn't get punished too bad for it. The explosion still lingers. The explosion too framed. This is just not fair. <laughs> poor King Kegel. The poor crocodile just can't touch the ground. He's waiting for Aria to overextend, but he's just stuck on that platform in the meantime. Yeah, that's the throw into the F tilt. Classic. Not much he could have done there at all. There. He's making really good use of his command grab there. Not confident that he was gonna be fast enough to get like a follow-up like up smash or up air before he This goes for his quickest and you know easiest cover all option, the neutral air. Okay, tries to go for up throw down in. I didn't think that that was a thing, and clearly it wasn't since, since K King Kalo ended up popping out of it. But you know what? I still appreciate the effort regardless. I like the little jump out after the throw. Didn't want to get hit by the crown. You know, just decided it might be best to use that neutral here. Ooh, so close to calling out that jump, and if that would be the case, that would have most certainly been the stock. Good wait for the grenade. Where's the crown? Where did it go? Yeah, despite the fact that he even rolled, he was still hit by Nikita. This is tough. He needs to find a way to initiate, but that is the unteckable forward air, uh, the back air spike into the up air. Man, unteckable spike, grounded spike setups in Ultimate. Like, things that you'd combo off of those, they look so degenerate, but 
I can't help but respect him in some way. Like, I know Falco has a lot of those, especially, as well as, like, Captain Falcon. Um, but, yeah, no, that was a really, really nice follow-up to Manzo. I don't think Alia could have teched that at all. Um, yeah, and I will be right back. I want to get some chocolate because I need at least something to get me through this match. To get me through King K. Gold Snake, I, I need a little something, something. So I will be back in just, like, two minutes. Woohoo! Wooyah woohoo! I've returned. And I have this really nice dark orange uh, chocolate. It's very nice. I love the combination of chocolate and orange. It's one of the best. Have you had those chocolate oranges? Or is that what you just said? I only heard part of it. Like a, like a dark chocolate water with um, some orange peel in it. Oh, but have you had those like dark ch those chocolate oranges that are like is, uh, in the shape of an orange? I have not. Oh, they're like more popular in the UK, but I remember having like a few of them when I was like younger. I haven't really seen them around nowadays, but if I can find a chocolate orange, I will point in your direction because granted, you know, it's still, you know, chocolate with orange in it. So what you're having is the same, but this is in the shape of an orange and it has little slices like an orange, but it's made of chocolate. It's incredible. Yes, sketch. A ball of chocolate. 100%. Oh my god, I looked away for a second and he lost his stock. Alia goes Ness. Uh, this is a ridiculous matchup for Ness. Like, absolutely absurd. King K. Gul cannot breathe. Ness hits him once and, and he's, he's off stage and taking 60%. He has some of the worst tools to be able to deal with PK Fire. Or the lack of tools at least. King K. Gul definitely just struggles in this matchup. But Aria loves booting that double jump. How is he gonna be able to win? He still finds a way to get back down. But yeah, this this matchup is just a sandbox. It's a field day for the Ness. Uh, he has to be careful about the way that he's trying to anti air King Kegel because that neutral air, um, with the way that Ness sort of leaves his head kind of exposed, uh, will more often than not end up trading, if not losing altogether. 
Uh, so either he has to go for the, like, back hit neutralize, make sure that his back is facing King K. Wall, if he's gonna try to anti it, or go for the up hits and up tilts to catch a landing. Otherwise, he's just going to trade every single time. Ooh, that two played, but sent the completely wrong way. It didn't spike, but you know what? I'm here for it. He tries to go for the grab. He has to understand it from such a low percentage. Um, and being so heavy, King K. Will is definitely not, um, Ness does not have, like, the plus frames to be able to go and get that kind of big grab, unless he mashed, like, air dodge or something. You know, it's so much more useful to, um, try to extend photo stuff with, like, Magnet, especially on heavyweights, since you don't have to touch the ground, you don't have to undergo landing lag, you don't have to go jump again. Um... Yeah, just going for forward little magnet nail and then a re-grab. Just so much better for Ness. Overall, he tries to finish it off with a reverse aerial rush magnet into back air. However, he does not find it. Gets the weak hit of back air. Not able to actually cover the attack. Gets this time the reverse magnet. Drag down up air, but finishes it with neutral instead of another attack. Um, Enzo actually deciding to stuff out the yo-yo with a get-up attack. That is the proper choice. King K. Lil at 160%. He can and will cheat. He is at the ledge. Please, for the love of God, don't get blunder bust. He has no jump and he's off stage. Oh my God. Oh my God. He's, he's joking. Look at him. He's burning. <gasps> no! That was tragic. Why? Why did you burn your double jump? That was tragic. I mean, fantastic edgeguard by Enzo. He just never let him off, but oh no. Awful. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty upset about that. <sighs> Why? Why did you do this to yourself? All you had to do was not burn your double jump. You just had to wait on ledge. Man. I don't often say I hated you, but, um... I kind of do. Helper's not here to uh, to stop you. It's like, thanks, I love it. <laughs> 